Hi, I'm Father Anthony Hannon from Invian Patches, and this is to prepare his way. For anyone who has been paying attention, the Holy Catholic Church has been in a huge crisis and has been for some time, the likes of which we have never seen before. And I'm not just talking about the crisis caused by the terrible sins and crimes committed by some priests and bishops over the past several decades, and who knows how long before that. And the cover-ups of such crimes, which have contributed to an almost complete loss of credibility. And I'm not just talking about mismanagement of funds, of various financial crises, of which there are many of those as well. But I'm talking now, today, about the things that are coming out of the Vatican, being reported to us by images, videos, interviews, words, written and oral, that for all intents and purposes, sure look like outright open apostasy. There has already been some concerns raised because of the working document and the things that were in that and not in that. But now, before our very eyes, we are seeing things unfold that will shake the faith of many. And I'm reminded of Jesus' words, speaking of himself, when he said, When the Son of Man returns, will he find any faith on earth? If you're watching this video, you probably have faith. <laughs> I don't get that many people watching the videos. Those of you who are watching, I think you have faith. And faith is a precious gift, and it needs to be guarded, and it needs to be shared. But it is precious. It is of infinite value. And we do not want to lose that faith. For you and I know that the stakes are high, none other than the eternal destiny of our souls. Will we be in heaven with all our deepest desires fulfilled, gazing upon the beatific vision, happy forever and ever? Or will we be eternally in torment in hell because of our unrepentant sins? And if you're Catholic, you, like St. Paul, work out your salvation in fear and trembling. Because we know how weak we are, how prone we are to give in to temptation. And temptation comes in many forms. We receive temptation from the world, who does not know Christ, the world's values. We receive temptation from within ourselves because of our wounded nature, because we don't always see things clearly. And we receive temptation from the enemy of our souls and from all the fallen angels who whisper thoughts get us away from that steadfast following of Christ, our wholehearted love for God. The first commandment that God gave to Moses, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods before me. And God loved us so much that he became one of us. <laughs> and this Jesus revealed God to us, himself to us, as a trinity of persons, one God, three persons, a great mystery. But what we're seeing from the Amazon Synod seems to be a violation of that first and paramount commandment. I would like to strengthen you and myself in this video by reminding us of the truths of our faith so that in those times of temptations we will not lose our faith we will not apostatize which would be the worst 
First, I'd like to read from the beginning of St. John's Gospel, also known as the Prologue, also known as the Last Gospel, because for centuries, this Gospel passage was read at the end of Mass, and still is today at the end of the extraordinary form of the Mass. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only begotten son, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Through the words of the Gospel, may our sins be wiped away. And now, the sacred words from the Council of Nicaea, the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May these words resonate in us. May our guardian angel remind us of these words in times of temptation against our faith. And via patches into the way of peace, the truth will set us free. May the Lord bless you and protect you from all evil. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.